Here's your host, Alex Garrett. A little weird to start with this music? Sure, sure it is. But this is the music of William Shakespeare's time. And amazingly, William Shakespeare, the great author himself, has literally injected himself into the vaccine conversation. And that is where I start today's Alex Garrett podcasting uh, presentation. Because, yes, a man named William Shakespeare... I love what New York Times writer Elian Peltier phrased it. William Shakespeare has been vaccinated against the coronavirus. In brackets, he writes, yes, you read that right. And so, 81-year-old William Shakespeare, who actually, eerily enough, took the vaccine at University Hospital Coventry, just 20 miles north of where the play, uh, the poet and the playwright was born. Now, I, I hope maybe one day I get to speak to this man, before, you know, 81, and then he lives for a few years later, longer. Because I'd love to talk to him. I'd love to have a William Shakespeare on my podcast. And sometimes speaking things into existence might just make it happen. We'll have to see. But yes, a William Shakespeare, 20 miles north of the actual birthplace of the writer William Shakespeare, the legend William Shakespeare, took the coronavirus, was the first man to do so. Now, across the pond, there's that news. And then, of course, here in New York, Governor Cuomo saying by the weekend, could be 72,000 vaccines ready for New York City alone, thanks to, well, the pending approval of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, I'm getting tired of, you know, seeing some of these stories. Oh, you might have all these allergies or... You might have these risks. I'm also tired that the legislature uh, of the idea that the legislature here in New York could mandate this vaccine if less than 70 percent say they don't want, you know, take it. Look, the vaccine is still a very tricky thing. Always will be. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a risk. And of course, with that risk comes a choice. Do you take that risk or not? While 50% of Americans right now say they will not, according to the Associated Press and a new poll out, you can't mandate it either, New York State Assembly. You just cannot. Because if you mandate it, and there are risks to this, allergy, uh, people with allergies could get sicker than others. People with first, uh, you know, at-risk people could still be affected by a vaccine then a mandate doesn't seem so smart so how do you bank yourself how come how do we avoid banking this whole COVID future on this vaccine while it is great while 72,000 in New York alone is promising and hopeful and done by the Trump administration there's no doubt just getting outside and getting some air and Getting away from the maybe musty home or whatever, just to be outside and not locked in all the time might help. I do believe we can avoid this vaccine, too, and avoid it being mandated at least. I want you. I think it's important to take it, but I absolutely don't think it should be mandated. The best way to do that is to just take your precautions. Wear the mask when you need to. Uh, w- w- you know, w- do wash your hands. Do do hand sanitizer. And most importantly, people, stop gathering in big crowds. The really only thing, and I, I, the limit of 10 people didn't make sense to me, but the point about it is so true. Why in a pandemic, when we know it could spread, are large crowds even able to happen? Demonstrations, Trump rallies, if you want to throw that in there. Because you know some of these demonstrations do not have masks on. And you know probably that some of these Trump ralliers did have masks on. So you could find the, the quirk of both arguments, right? But how about we don't gather for a while in big gatherings? 
How about we do spend time more with our loved ones and our family that we see each other. And if, you know, if something happens, you could probably immune each other by just being around each other. But go into big crowds. I mean, more than 10 people. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. People want to do that. Fine. Don't limit that. But we can't have 5,000 messages going on where we're hearing, don't gather. But then we see gatherings of people protesting or, you know, celebrating the streets after Biden win. After Biden's win. And no one really condemned that. So the across the board answer shouldn't be, well, this vaccine, who we are seeing have risks, risks, we should mandate it. And at the same time, we should, uh, while we shouldn't mandate it, we should say, what are the alternatives to the vaccine if 50% of America is not comfortable? I've said before, um, I had a shot once, had four things in it, four different ingredients to fight whatever strains it had to. Got tired. Very lethargic. I mean, I know there's some word, but it's a little more than just tired. It was lethargic, lethargy, Leth- being lethargic. But I would gladly take this thing, to be honest, because then at least maybe mentally I'll feel safer. But I'll know that that we worked it. I also think people should get antibodies test. We are talking an awful lot about COVID testing still now and then every day. But you know what we could also be talking about? Get your antibody test. Because if we found out people have had it more than we know, then you can open places up and say, yeah, they've, they've had it. This restaurant servers, employees didn't know it, but they had it. So we can open up and we can make it safe. No one's pushing really to get the antibodies test. No one's even really giving stats about that. Why? Because if we know who have antibodies and who doesn't, and the percentages, I think we can gauge that possibly more so than the test itself. You know why? Because I believe they take a blood test for that antibody test. And do you know blood does not lie? Blood is what's in here. It's science. That is the science. What's in our veins. This nose test I read a couple of days ago, the chief said seven false positives. So, in essence, what is the testing doing? Is it accurate or not? So, why don't we switch from mandating vaccines, switch from stress testing, the COVID test itself, and start encouraging people to give that little blood to find out if you have an antibody. Because I think people, honestly, much more than the vaccine, who, as I mentioned, 50% want it, uh, but don't want it, 50% do. But if if you say, hey, here's we're we've done all these blood samples, okay, and we know who has the antibodies and who doesn't. And if they don't, just keep it and be safe. But if they do, of course, give warning and you can get it again. But don't don't be too alarmed because you've already had you have the antibodies. At one point in Connecticut, five percent of the population have antibody had antibodies at one point. You take a whole swath, 167,000 people, which was what they did. And you say, hey, look, these people, this group has antibodies. That should give hope that the people either have gotten it and don't have it. Or if, if we're seeing those numbers, just encourage that. I really believe in getting them because if I had it, I would want to know, wouldn't you? If you had it and you didn't know, but you were even symptomatic, go out and get your antibody test. I'm just thinking we are banking too much on the glory of these vaccines. As great as it is that we've got treatments that should be utilized, should not be talked down. Let's also think of the alternatives for the 50% that don't want. And the 50% that don't want it, take your antibody test now then. Let's see if you have... Look, if 50% of America has antibodies, we can reopen up a little faster than slower. And that's just a fact. And as I said, these swabs, I don't know. 
may not be accurate enough. But you talk about science, Governor Cuomo. You talk about science, Mayor de Blasio. You talk about data. I want to know what's in the bloodstream now. I'm very, I am very curious. Because if we inject something into our bloodstream, that makes us tired, lethargic. If you're allergic, if you have allergies, you're going to get it worse, apparently, the side effects. Then let's see what's in the bloodstream first before injecting this in our bloodstream. I know I've been clapping a lot uh, last couple of days, but I'm just very passionate about this. Because I do not want to see our country continue to close down simply on one set of stats anymore. In news, you got to go through second, third source verification. In the medical profession, you have to have more than a second, uh, first opinion. So why don't we take that approach here and say, okay, we see that at least one study shows 167,000 people, 5% of a population in Connecticut, have antibodies. Who's to say that number isn't more across the country? So go out. Get your antibody test. Hopefully the blood they collect, I think, could be donated, actually, after the... Or, you know, whatever. Donate blood if you can as well, because we're doing a blood... We have a blood shortage here in America right now, and here in New York City especially. But go for it. Take the COVID test, sure. Wear the mask. 1,000%. But... With a big butt. Let's start honing in on what these antibodies are showing us. Or what these blood tests for antibodies are showing us. And let's get to the bottom of this. Because I think going as a lockdown as a first source is not the answer. First al- first resource is not, all- is it not an alternative. It shouldn't be. Especially when we're going to have data that says, Hey, you know what? This vaccine's working, but you know what else? People have naturally gotten over this. And we see that in the antibody test. Why are you promoting that more, medical community? Why is the test the answer for everything? The COVID test? When we're seeing negatives one day, positives another, and then whatever. Seems the most reliable thing to do is just check our actual blood So that we can save the blood, sweat, and tears that go into every business and every person's life in America. By tapping into our bloodstream, we can save the lifeblood of America. So let's do it. Alex G in NYC.net. Alex G in NYC.net. If you want to be an anti-Trumper, whatever, be an antibody advocate then. And that antibody will be stronger than any other testing method we've had. I feel it. I feel very strongly about it, actually. Knowing now that we have at least 5% of Connecticut alone. 167,000 people, according to the CDC. New York's... um, I've got to see if New York's rate of... This is true. They say rate of infection... Is 7%. If 7% of a New York has antibodies, and that's a swath of people, then folks, you might have it too. And you can have it and say, you know what, I've had this. I'm going to live my life the best I can knowing I've had it. I'll avoid it, of course. But let's tap into this source. It's like tapping into the oil of our countries that are going out to Saudi Arabia for it, right? It's like tapping into our oil, our own bodies. Are te- can tell us so much. And this antibody test is no um, exception. I want to play you at some point a line that I wrote, I said in a play written by my friend Adeline in a uh, mini TV show or whatever you want to call it. It was like a mini movie. And it was like almost like the the shakes the irony is Shakespearean. I think was the line. How ironic! William Shakespeare injecting himself into the vaccine conversation by virtue of eighty-one-year-old William uh, William vaccine William Shakespeare. 
I just want to leave you with this note then. As the amazing William Shakespeare said, all's well, ends well. We've just got to break through the dam of goodness every damn day. Alex G in NYC at gmail.com. Alex G in NYC at gmail.com and my website, Alex G in NYC.net. <laughs> 